If you've been anywhere near online language learning circles, you might have noticed this one question getting asked and answered, asked and answered again constantly. Can you learn multiple languages at once and how? Welcome to Rhapsody in Lingo. I'm Israel. I speak around 10 to a dozen languages and it's Christmas Day. So what's a better way to celebrate than talk about language learning? But to answer that question, rather than preach at you and tell you what to do, I thought I'd show you how I do it, or the kinds of things that I do regularly to maintain at least three to four languages. The key to doing that is incredibly simple. You need to keep contact with each and one of the languages. And to me, maintaining a portfolio or a system of multiple languages in my head is a lot like maintaining a healthy diet, sort of, which I guess I'm not really good at. So a quick question to you. How do you plan your diet when you want to maintain a healthy intake? A lot of us were taught about the food pyramid, where you have multiple layers of different kinds of foods, providing different kinds of nutrition. The bottom layer is a kind of food that you should consume most often, whereas the top layer would be other things that you might add to your diet to add more variety. I like to use that model as a reference for how I consume my languages, because it reminds me of how much grinding is involved in language learning which is unfortunately true. You have to do some repeated things every single day in order for the learning to take effect and for the stuff you learn to stick in your brain. So I sort of have a daily routine of sorts where I do repeated things every single day, but also I add in other things from other levels on top of the daily routine in order to spice up my learning and get more varied kind of exposure to the languages. I think what kinds of activity you include in your daily regimen will absolutely depend on what you're learning, how many languages you're learning, what level you are, what kind of learner you are, what your interests are, what you like to do in order to learn language, etc. But the way things work for me at the moment, I have four levels of activities divided based on their frequency. But the one thing they all have in common is they all give context to my languages, whether it's language context as in vocabulary or grammar or if it's a social context, a reason for me to use my languages in my daily life. So without further ado, let's get into level zero, the base level of my daily life. It's not really a kind of thing I intentionally do to maintain my languages, but it's technically still a foreign language and it contributes to the solar system of languages that are in my head at the moment. Because believe it or not, English is my foreign language and I live in the UK right now, which means in my daily life, I live and interact with people in English. I study and work in English, which is also something that is worth taking into account because it is sort of an activity that hones your language. For example, in the past few years, I have been reading slightly less English than I used to. So I did notice my English deteriorate a little bit, but at the same time, since I moved to Manchester, I've been paying more attention to various accents that I hear around me or on TV as I go on about my daily life. And through that, I've been working semi-consciously on my pronunciation a bit as well. So as weird as it might sound, even though I've been using English as one of my two main languages for a long time now, I'm still constantly in the process of maintaining it, changing it, transforming it or improving it etc. But now let's move on to level one, which is my daily routine. There are two things that I absolutely do every single day, which you might guess are apps that have a streak in them, which encourages me to keep engaging with the app. Some people say that this is a bit harmful because it encourages you to do brainless things every day uh, without giving you as much benefit as it could. But to me, first of all, I'm conscious of what I'm doing. I know exactly what I want out of these things and I know that they're benefiting me at the moment on the language levels that I'm on. Secondly, as I said, language learning is a grind. It takes a very long time of study and lots of tiny bouts of learning every single day in order for you to consolidate what you've learned. This is why I do these things. So before you do something like me, I encourage you to think about what kinds of benefits you're getting out of each learning tool. So the first of these tools is, well, you guessed it, it's Duolingo. I have a love-hate relationship with Duolingo. I've made more than one video about this. I'll admit it, I do Duolingo because the bird gave me Stockholm Syndrome using the streak, but it has certain 
qualities about it that I really like. For one, it's got some rare languages, such as Scottish Gaelic, which I've been doing a bit of every single day. And you know, it's a rare language, so it's hard to find resources elsewhere, especially things that you can keep doing every day. I'm also at the same time doing Turkish. Uh, I haven't been actively studying Turkish for a long time. Ever since I announced that I was learning Turkish exactly one year ago, link to the video there, I've gone through a grammar book, I've tried watching some easy Turkish videos, but most of it was just uh, Duolingo Turkish, which I'm fine with because I don't absolutely have to be very serious about each language at the same time. For me, this is a fun project. I'm dabbling in it. I'm getting something out of it. So I'm happy. But as I mindlessly click through the exercises, I always make sure to repeat the sentences the best I could. And if you're wondering how far I got with my Turkish, I basically gave it a bit of a break ever since the polyglot gathering last year, where you might recall from that video, I intended to use the language with my friend. But more recently, I ran into quite a lot of Turks at a language meetup. So I actually got to use a little bit with them and struggle intensely and perform live sentence formation in front of their eyes, which they seem to enjoy. At least they were very encouraging. But more on that later. Enough about Duolingo. What's the other thing that I'm doing every day? Well, you might have heard me talk about it many times because I absolutely love this and I absolutely think they should sponsor me because I've been doing Close Master for a long time now, every single day. But for those who haven't heard me talk about it yet, Close Master is a game looking system for close exercises, as the name implies. What's a close exercise? It's basically fill in the blanks. So you just keep getting lots of sentences in your target language, you get a translation in the source language, and then you try to fill in the word with the right conjugation or declension that works in this sentence. I like it because it shows you the context, as in what kinds of situations this particular word may show up in, or how this word collocates with other words, as in what words go well with this particular word. And the system automatically spaces out the reviews like a space repetition system, as in each sentence comes back at increasingly large intervals. So after I learn a new sentence, I see it again tomorrow, and then maybe like a month later, and then maybe like six months later, and so on. So that means sentences and reviews can eventually accumulate. In most languages, you have sentences organized by frequency, as in you learn the most frequent words first, such as a and the, or like colors, your daily life, verbs, and so on. And then as you gradually clear each collection of sentences, you move on to less frequent words. So now I'm at the very last collection of Polish sentences, which is 50,000 plus. So I get lots of rare words, like something scientific, a weirdly large number of repetitions for the word native speaker. Either way, I read aloud each sentence as one unit in a fluent manner. I always use a type of exercise where you type out the answers, but if I couldn't remember what it was, I would use the hint and then the multiple choice. And if I don't think I know the word well enough, I would manually set it to one of the other levels, for example 50% or 75%, so that I would see them sooner once again. So I actually used to do Polish, Hebrew and Welsh on Close Master. I gave up on Welsh because um, it's one of the languages that doesn't have a, an organized set of sentences. Rather, when you do one of these smaller languages on Close Master, which there are a lot of, you actually get assigned random sentences every day. So you might get some really hard words in the very beginning, and then later on you might get some super easy words. So I gave up. But other than that, I was doing Hebrew and Polish for a long time as well. And then I gave up on Hebrew. What's the reason? For one, I don't want to focus as much on Hebrew anymore. Uh, before you overthink, it's a personal thing. It's just too much for my brain to handle. And the daily reviews just really stack up. You start with like tens of reviews and then you end up with hundreds every single day, even if you keep it up every day. And then if you miss it for a few days, let's say you're on a trip, you end up with like a thousand sentences easily. So it got too much. Some of my friends have asked me, how much do I do on Close Master every day? Some of my friends clear all their reviews every single day and then they move on to new sentences. I have my own system and I think you should build your own too. How I do it is, I used to do 50 reviews every day, as in 50 sentences that I had already learned on Close Master, and then I move on to the new sentences. But I realized that wasn't enough because as the sentences, again, they pile up, 50 won't cut it anymore. 
and they just pile up really quickly uh, as you go. So now how I do it is I keep doing reviews until I have 50 left. Why 50? It's just for me to maintain control over the accumulation of sentence reviews because if I do too few reviews, I might get too many reviews the next day. For example, if I have like 100 left today, tomorrow I might have 200. If I do too many reviews, let's say I clear all my reviews, just because of how the spaced repetition algorithm works, I might get no reviews tomorrow. So it gets a bit awkward. So as I said, I always do my reviews until there's 50 left, more or less, and there is some leeway. Uh, let's say I have 200 reviews today, so I do around 150 of them. And then I move on to the new sentences. So when I go to my unfinished collections, whether it's the frequency collection or the fluency fast track collection, I go to play and I do 10 sentences each round. So what happens in each round is if there are still reviews left in that collection, for example, in my 50,000 plus collection, you get five reviews per round and then you get five new sentences. And then I play four rounds. So usually when I end a day's work on Closemaster, I have around 30 total reviews left because I cut it down to 50 and then I do four more rounds of five reviews each. So 30 and then I will have learned 20 new sentences. So that's how I found the balance for me. That's how it works for me right now. And you should try to see what works for you. Maybe you like my friends and you want to finish everything and then just learn five sentences every day. But the point is you do a bit of grinding every single day and then after a year after well my streak is 1000 days now at least after 1000 days you get a lot of sentences and words that come with them let's move on to the second layer which are things that i try to do more often but because i can't do too many things every single day i just end up doing them occasionally one of them is glossica Glossica is, well, in its current form, more, a more passive way of practicing language because it's all about reps, as in you keep exposing yourself to the same sentences again and again. So in a sense, it's a lot like Closed Master, but more passive. The funny story, my blog actually has a lot to do with Glossica because for a long time, the most read posts on my blog were always my Glossica reviews. So I've been a big fan for a long time. Again, they should sponsor me. So how it works for now is if you click learn new items, you will get a set of five new sentences each, and then each sentence will be repeated five times. So 25 in total per round. So it basically plays the source language and then the target language, and it gives you some time to repeat it or even to think about the sentence a bit. But what I do is, as I said in my favorite video that I made, I pay attention to the details in each sentence. I think about why it's formulated this way, or I make a note of myself that things should be formulated this way. Of course, when I'm repeating the sentences, I try to pay attention to all the tiny details in a pronunciation. And in the case of Welsh, it means the tiny gaps between the syllables. For example, llywodraeth meddygol. And then as it repeats, I just try to learn the whole thing by heart. Because the theory is when you learn enough sentences, which phrase various things in various ways, your brain will automatically figure out how the language works and internalize the structure. Uh, I've actually managed to learn Polish mainly through this system. So I have a lot of faith in how it works. And after you finish learning the new sentences, Again, it puts those sentences into one of those space repetition algorithms, spaces them out, and then when you click review, it serves up a bunch of sentences and you hear each one once at spaced intervals. I might actually make a video detailing how I use Glossica sometime down the line. So if you do want to see that, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment telling me that you want to see that video made. The other thing that I occasionally do is Anki. So it's one of the more popular flashcard apps that everyone sort of knows about. It's again, one of the same thing. Uh, you repeat things at various intervals so that they stop you forgetting and stick in your head. But what's special about Anki, it's more flexible. So for one, you can download other people's decks from the internet and just study them, which is what I did for Polish back in the day in 2016. I learned most of my vocabulary by clicking on that deck every single day and then I actually learned a lot of useless vocabulary at that time. 
which I find useful now when I'm advanced, but the conclusion is that's not the best way to go because learning vocabulary is different from learning structure. What Glossika does for me is learning how the language works, but Anki mainly helps me learn vocabulary and each person needs different kinds of vocabulary at different levels at different times. So while sometimes I still use other people's decks, for example, right now I'm doing a deck that teaches you Welsh through Hebrew, which is crazy, the fact that it exists. That one is mainly for filling in gaps I may have in my vocabulary. What I prefer to do is to find words that I am interested in myself. I put them in context once again, in example sentences, grammatical features, other collocations and so on, and then study that. Anki also gives me more of a studying feel to it. For example, I downloaded a deck for the uh, British citizenship test in Welsh. Oh, that's today. Which has got all the British history terms in it. Uh, I started looking into that, lots of stuff that I actually have no idea about. But there you go. It's a kind of system that you use when you want to study for something, in my opinion. Mainly because it's more customizable, so you can use it in a more targeted way compared to the uh, random sentences that you get from the other systems. Before we move on to the third layer, which I call the cherry on top, aka the real language, can you just go ahead and click that like button? Because if you've made it this far, you like this video, so just tell YouTube that you do. And also, if you like what I do in general on this channel, feel free to support me on Buy Me A Coffee or join the channel membership. So as I was saying, the third layer is the real language, the meat of language learning. So if you look at the food pyramid, the third layer is where you get the meat stuff above the vegetables and the bread and grains and rice and so on. I call it the meat because it's the best way to expose myself to the language, as in the grammar, structure and vocabulary in a wider context, in real language use and also to the culture. So what it consists of is just basically consuming various types of content in each language. So to be precise, what I do at the moment is I basically listen to every episode of a Polish podcast about China called Malpovidiana, the Easy German podcast, and then a Swedish radio show called Sprocket, which is about languages and linguistics, which is kind of what we do on our Cantonese podcast. If you speak or learn Cantonese, don't forget to check it out. There's also all the television and film that people love so much. I'll admit I'm not good at watching television and films, as in I just don't get motivated to start watching something because it feels like a huge investment and also I feel guilty from watching like several episodes at once. So I don't do it as much as I should. But since my main focus now is Welsh, which is weird because I've barely mentioned it so far, it's got limited media that I can expose myself to. So I, I try my best to watch more Esped Vorek, which is the Welsh language television channel. At the moment, I'm catching up on a show called A Goleidi, uh, which is about a lighthouse set in the south of Wales. One thing about Espedorek is it's like other catch-up channels in the UK, things expire in like two months. So I have actual motivation to go ahead and watch the stuff before it's gone forever. But obviously there's also Netflix. I pretty much convinced Netflix that I'm Polish, so it keeps recommending Polish things to me now, which is good thing because it's got loads. It's just I haven't got the time to finish them. I also do want to make a video about how Netflix despite all the controversies, is still my favorite platform for watching foreign language content. And of course YouTube, but you know YouTube already, you're on YouTube. And then there's reading. I sort of alternate between ebooks and physical books. I like physical books because of how they feel and also after I finish I can post about them on Instagram, which I recently did. But at the moment I'm finishing a German book by Sebastian Niedlich, uh, which is a comedy writer that I enjoy reading a lot. But once I finish that, I plan to start either uh, animal Farm in Polish, because I randomly picked it up when I was traveling in Sopot, I think. Or I might start this Welsh young adult fantasy-ish novel that I randomly picked up in Cardiff. But the key is that I cycle between my different languages, so I sort of get equal exposure to each of them at different parts of the year. And a fourth and top layer, yes I lied to you because that's five layers in total, consists of events that I go to to actually use the language with other people. So ever since I moved to Manchester, I've been attending a language meetup at a pub every single week, basically, where I meet all sorts of people. So I've made some friends that speak languages that I do. Most of the time, I don't get to use my languages because I don't speak a mainstream one like Spanish. 
so I end up just socializing in English, which is also nice. But when I actually get to practice my languages, it's a bonus. Such as the day I came back from Lithuania and then immediately met a Lithuanian at the meetup. Amazing feeling. There's also a monthly Welsh meetup in Manchester that I go to, a whole night of speaking just Welsh and no English at all. On top of that, I've got weekly classes. Uh, I've been going to an intermediate Welsh class for a few months now. So that is a semi-passive, semi-active activity that I go to every single week. Uh, we've got three hours of uh, talking to each other and learning about the structures and words and using them in various kinds of tasks. In the near future, I will also start going to a weekly British Sign Language class. So again, just an active way of using my languages with people. Another thing that I used to do but haven't been doing lately is taking private lessons on italki. I found a Polish teacher there that I really resonate with and more importantly, they give me exactly what I need at my current level, which is almost advanced. Ever since we started, apart from like the casual conversation and chatting, they've been setting me specific tasks to read, to write and to talk about difficult things, to force myself to use the words that I may or may not know and improve my fluency. Sadly, I haven't been doing that for a while now because of my finances. Did you know that I do this YouTube thing for free? Like I don't make anything from it yet. So if you want to give me a hand on my language learning journey, and more importantly, give yourself a hand as well, go ahead and use the affiliate link below and go to italki, the marketplace where you can find yourself a private language tutor. After you get your first lesson, both you and me will get some nice free credits to get more language lessons so that we can all learn happily ever after. But as I mentioned earlier, there are other ways you can support me documenting my language learning journey and sharing my experience with you all. All the links are in the description and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.